Baltimore, America's sixth largest city, 12th largest metropolitan area, home of more than a million and a half people, site of the nation's biggest steel rolling plant, home for the House of McCormick, this country's biggest tea and spice house, America's second seaport. This is Baltimore, a big city growing bigger so fast that every day it has a new face, a new complexion. A city growing faster than New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Cleveland, most other big cities in America today. This is the real Baltimore. If you're not native to the area, this is the Baltimore you probably have known, the Baltimore travelers used to see passing through the city on the main arteries of routes 1 and 40. Today, of course, the main route through Baltimore takes the traveler to the outskirts of the city, then through the new exciting Harbor Tunnel. It's cut 40 minutes off north-south travel time. Let's look at the real Baltimore, a city of homes growing so fast that today's cornfield is tomorrow's new neighborhood of young, energetic families. But Baltimore is first and foremost a seaport, a big seaport that stretches for 46 miles along the Patapsco River and the upper reaches of the Chesapeake Bay. Baltimore is an inland port, close to the nation's densely populated heavy industry areas an asset which attracts millions of tons of both foreign and domestic shipping each year to the port of Baltimore. So many factories, warehouses, shipyards, and docks line the waterfront that the harbor itself is often hidden from view to most of those who depend upon it. Seaport, yes, but also a city of diversified industry, supplying jobs for a workforce of nearly three quarters of a million people. Over 208,000 factory workers, nearly 2,000 plants, making everything from aeroplanes to pretzels. 44,000 primary metal workers. 37,000 men and women making transportation equipment. 25,000 food processors. 19,000 employed in machinery manufacturing. 17,000 printers and allied tradesmen. 11,000 chemists and chemical workers. This is diversification in manufacturing. And in non-manufacturing jobs as well, diversification stands out. Nearly 100,000 people in selling jobs. Retail tradesmen supplying the hungry appetites of energetic Baltimoreans for every living need, and many luxuries as well. There are some 76,000 government employees here. 59,000 communications workers. 69,000 people in service jobs, 31,000 in finance, 41,000 in contract construction, and so on down the list. Such variety is unusual for a big city, and for Baltimore it adds up to an important big city asset, stability. Stability, a Baltimore asset, and the nation's leading economists recognize it. Recognize these names? Sure. Romo Seltzer, Black and Decker, Pittsburgh plate glass, Amoco, Cross and Blackwell, Copper's Company, Chevrolet, McCormick, Coca-Cola, Westinghouse. All of these big nationally known manufacturers have either home offices or major plant installations in Baltimore. Westinghouse, one of more than 30 leading industrial and manufacturing concerns with major Baltimore operations, provides jobs for more than 7,000 people alone. It's just one of the big plants turning out billions in products for sale around the world. And Westinghouse research is taking us rapidly into the space age, another product made in Baltimore. Here's what Baltimore looks like on the map. Note we have a Baltimore city and a Baltimore county. The city and county, combined with Anne Arundel County, make up the metropolitan Baltimore area. Rapidly growing, Howard, Harford, and Carroll counties add to the city's value as a marketplace and center of business and industry. Baltimore is a family town. People spend most of their spare time at home with their families and their neighbors. Most Baltimoreans own their own home, 55% do. Another good sign of economic stability. Television ratings hold up well on Saturday nights, where there isn't much nightlife, and there's tall Paul Richards and his high-flying Orioles. And the superb new stadium they both play in. 
There's the annual Spring Madness Lacrosse, a major high school and college sport in Maryland. Seafood, a whole bay full of it. Oysters, crab cakes, steam crabs, great with beer. And the sport of kings is close to the heart of Baltimoreans. There's Pimlico and nearby Laurel and Bowie. And two Baltimoreans get excited about the Chesapeake Bay in the spring when they can put their boats back in the water. And in the fall, when the wild ducks are flying. Baltimoreans are proud that Edgar Allan Poe lived here. In a nostalgic vein, they'll tell you about Henry Minkin, H.L. Minkin. About Jimmy Doolittle's victory in the Schneider Cup race in 1925. About Blockade's triple win of the Maryland Hunt Cup. About the defense of Fort McHenry, and its star-spangled banner. Every Baltimorean can give directions to Johns Hopkins Hospital and the university, to the million-volume Enoch Pratt Library, to the Baltimore Museum of Art, home of one of the world's greatest collections of French Impressionist art, to Mount Vernon Place and the monument to George Washington. Baltimore, historically, is a stable family town. Stable, yes, but not stagnant. Baltimore is growing at an explosive rate. Population of Baltimore in 1950, 1,337,000. Population today, 1,612,000. Predicted population in 1980, 2,650,000. With tremendous effort, housing facilities have kept pace with this growth. Most of this building has been in the suburbs in Baltimore and Anne Arundel counties. These young married Baltimoreans live here, not in the old row houses. This, and this, and this was open country five years ago. New homes are going up fast, $650 million worth from 1954 to mid-1958. A billion-dollar urban renewal program is now underway. Industrial and commercial growth has kept pace, too. $300 million worth in 1958 alone. Presently under construction are 24 other major projects, totaling $115 million. To serve this growing community are some 150 neighborhood and community shopping centers, 37 of which are of the modern type built since the end of the war. Four more shopping centers are under construction. About 25 are in the planning stage. Total retail sales volume in 1958, almost $2 billion. And here's a new aspect of Baltimore that out-of-towners will applaud. It's improved highway facilities, the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel. It's knocked almost an hour off the time required to drive through the city. And the tunnel is but one of several major highway projects which are now, or will soon, speed traffic into and around Baltimore. Relatively new, Friendship Airport is already handling jet age traffic. But by far the most ambitious single project outlined for Baltimore's future is the gigantic Charles Center, larger than Pittsburgh's Golden Triangle redevelopment and Philadelphia's Penn Center. Some authorities have called it the best planned redevelopment project in the nation. It calls for the rebuilding of 22 acres of downtown Baltimore at the cost of $127 million. Nearly every existing structure in the area will be replaced to make way for eight new office buildings, an 800-room hotel, a television theater center, 400,000 square feet of commercial and retail space, a transportation terminal, three parks, a 4,000-car underground garage, and safe, attractive walkways. The voters have approved the necessary bonds. Acquisition of property is already underway. This is just one-fourth of a 20-year, $420 million program to make Baltimore the East's most modern city. Yes, Baltimore is big and growing bigger. Its industries and citizens are prospering. Annual retail sales volume is climbing over $2 billion. Population is edging toward the $2 million mark. Baltimore is a market to watch. Until now, we've been talking about the Baltimore metropolitan area. Now let's turn to the Baltimore television market.
an area covering more than 20 counties in Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Delaware, an area where more than 2 million people choose Baltimore television stations for their TV entertainment, an area where more than 650,000 families own one or more TV sets. Note that York, Salisbury, Hagerstown, and much of Delaware is a part of the Baltimore television market. The counties outside metropolitan Baltimore add some 800,000 people to the television market, like adding a city the size of San Francisco to the Baltimore metropolitan population. Three television stations serve this area, all of them transmitting from atop this 730-foot tower located on Television Hill within the city limits. But of the three stations, one has for many months stood out above the rest in popularity ranking among Baltimoreans, WJZ-TV. Channel 13, the Westinghouse station, ABC affiliate, and the first ranking station in Baltimore according to American Research reports. The WJZ story is a Cinderella story in many ways. For the first nine years of its life, Channel 13 was known as WAAM. Throughout each of those nine years, Wham ranked third in the market in August of 57 and had a 25% share of the Baltimore audience. The next month, Channel 13 was purchased by the Westinghouse Broadcasting Company. The call letters changed to WJZ-TV, and within days, literally days, it was a completely new station with a completely new look. Since then, WJZ has consistently pulled from 35 to 40% of the Baltimore TV audiences, has increased its share of audience by a whopping 40%, has been the number one ranking station in Baltimore since the fall of 1957. How was this accomplished? with better programs, more and better promotions. But let's be specific. First about programming. WJZ bought the best feature films of MGM and RKO plus other top drawer packages at premium prices. And then these films were programmed across the board seven days a week at 6 p.m. and after the 10.30 news and weather as the early and late shows. Both have consistently been the highest rated programs in their respective time slots. Big changes were made in live programming, too. Three of Baltimore's best-known personalities were corralled for WJZ. Jack Wells has been Baltimore's number one morning man in radio. Now he's television's number one morning man. Buddy Dean came from Baltimore Radio, where he built up a loyal following as Baltimore's number one disc jockey. Now he MCs a teenage record hop every afternoon on WJZ. Buddy plays records, the kids dance, thousands watch. As a matter of fact, more adults watch Buddy Dean than watch most of the daytime network shows seen in Baltimore. Further evidence of the phenomenal popularity of this Pied Piper of television is the fact that ARB audience surveys credit Buddy Dean with an unduplicated weekly audience far greater than any Baltimore newspaper circulation. He is Baltimore's best known television personality. For its newsman, Westinghouse chose Keith McBee, 11 years in the business, a reporter who knows firsthand the men who make the news. His newscasts at 7.20 and 10.30 p.m. are the highest rated in Baltimore, strong network newscast competition included. Now, in the area of syndicated films, WJZ is just as strong, with a choice film schedule that consistently gives WJZ eight out of the top ten syndicated shows. WJZ is a favorite with the kids, too. Romper Room, practically an institution, was born right here in Baltimore. And what is life without Popeye? And, of course, the Three Stooges, regular features on Channel 13. There's one more element that hasn't hurt Jay-Z's popularity either. WJZ alone carries the televised games of the Baltimore Orioles. Here, then, is the WJZ program story. Feature films, local personalities, syndicated films, juvenile programs, and sports, all programmed intelligently around the best of ABC. Notice the predominance of local programming, more than is offered by the other two stations combined. For the advertiser, this means more and better availability. And then there's promotion, real promotion. Promotion the likes of which Baltimore has never seen before. This booklet, prepared by WJZ, sums up the station's promotion efforts. And they are tremendous. 40,000 milk bottle collars monthly. 200,000 laundry stuffers monthly. Newspaper ads almost every day. 24 sheet billboards monthly. Taxi posters monthly. 200,000 matchbooks. 30 Maryland News Company delivery trucks. 
and three station-owned vehicles touring the city. Three million ice cream cartons per year, 40 radio spots a week, and 20,000 school bus covers. Movie trailers in 72 theaters. Seven super-painted outdoor bulletins. Hundreds of on-the-air promotion spots each week. And effective ads in every issue of TV Guide. Yes, WJZ-TV never stops promoting. Better programming with more and better promotion. These are the principal ingredients of Channel 13's dominance in Baltimore. Ratings are only an indirect measure of WJZ's influence on the market, influence exerted by the extraordinary services the station renders the community. Extraordinary services, here are a few examples. WJZ sent its own news reporter, Keith McBee, to Lebanon during the 1958 crisis to gather firsthand film and tape reports. WJZ regularly broadcasts editorials on crucial local issues. Exclusive reports by Dr. Milton Eisenhower on his tour of Latin America. Courses in American literature in Russian. This reprint of a recent ad lists 22 such projects undertaken by WJZ last year alone. Theme of the ad, the most talked about, the most referred to, the most influential station in Baltimore is WJZ. So there you have it. The story of Baltimore, the story of WJZ. Whatever you remember from this picture story presentation, remember these two facts above all else. One, Baltimore is big, modern, and prosperous, and it's growing bigger at an astounding rate, unmatched by most American cities of comparable size. And two, Baltimore is a WJZ town, a town where TV families spend more time with WJZ-TV than with any other station.